Right, we've got the radio in the shack. I've got um, got it connected up to my G5 RV wire antenna just to uh, give it an initial test. It's had a an hour or so charging, so hopefully there's enough capacity in the uh, the battery now. Let's turn it on. And the first thing you should see is you get a splash screen. And uh, we're on the 22 meter band, which where I left it just before I put it on to charge. And uh, I have to say the encoder wheel feels better than the one in the ATS-20. Whether that's anything to go by. So, there's a few stations there. Let's have a look at some of the other functions. We've got a volume function. We've got a mute button here. Which... Does just what it says and mutes the uh, mutes the audio. I'll turn the volume down slightly. You see below about twenty, it pretty much disappears. Maybe it's a bit different on headphones. I don't know. You see, after we uh, adjusted the volume, the the button timed out after a few seconds. It's quite a useful feature. We can alter the tuning step. We've got the choices. Um, looks like that's all we've got. Ten, uh, ten kilohertz. Again, just I uh, just by moving the rotator, uh, the encoder wheel, I got out of that menu. We've got the mode menu, which, as I uh, said uh, before, I noticed it seems to have a synchronous uh, function. So let's just hit the sync, and we bring the volume up a little bit. I'll just get the volume there and come up with the volume I'm not sure how much difference our synchronous function makes but there it is anyway let's just move that for a second um, We'll go back to the normal AM function. I will turn the volume down. I haven't worked out there's um, some sort of uh, method of memories here. Or oh, so it would seem there's a preset button. Um, it seems to default default the radio to FM you can see we're on 88 uh, megahertz now so I'm not quite sure <clears throat> what that's about I'll just uh, click next and return and we should be able to go back to the band selector there and you can see we have a number of uh, broadcast bands here from 11 meters down to 90 meters we have FM LWMW OT let's see what OT is and uh, okay takes us to 2400 kilohertz interesting we have a bandwidth button no oh, sorry that's a band button so not sure how we alter the bandwidth I'm guessing there must be a way we have, ah, oh, there we are, it's BW. It's marvellous when you haven't got an instruction booklet. So we've got selectable bandwidths from 1 kilohertz up to 6 kilohertz. Okay, let's uh, select 4. And I wonder, is this mode dependent? So if we go to mode, as we're in AM, and we go to USB, and then we hit the bandwidth button now. Yes, we've got down to 0.5 kilohertz up to four. So that's quite uh, quite good. And if we hit the ham button, we just have the amateur bands as opposed to the broadcast bands. So what happens if we go for 0.1 to 30? Does that give us a, I guess it gives us a continuous band. 
through the medium wave uh, spectrum. So let's see if we can hear Radio 4. We shouldn't have uh, any problems. It's just uh, it's going to be 198. Um, 198 kilohertz. And we'll give it a bit of volume. And uh, there we have Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 and Long Wave. So it doesn't look too difficult to operate. Um, a little instruction booklet would have been handy, but we haven't got one. Um, I think we've covered all of the uh, functions. The key button, let's hit that. And obviously we've got an ability now to punch in a frequency. I'm assuming as is a decimal point, this will be in megahertz. So let's try six. Uh, 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 no, there's no clear key, is there? So that's interesting. So it knows it's an error. Can we go back? No. Let's go to key again. So let's try six decimal zero. Okay, enter, and there we go. Um, we're in one kilohertz steps here. Um, I'm not sure what mode we're in. Are we in AM? Let's go back to the mode. Let's make sure we're in AM. And let's go into 5 kilohertz steps. And now we can step up through the band. Uh, 607. Now have we got anything there? Turn the volume up a little. Conditions again. As always when I do any kind of demonstration of a radio. Conditions are not brilliant. Let's see if we can pick anything up on 49 meters. No, not really. Some sort of weak and watery signal or something there. There we go. So we're actually in um, the bandwidth we're on here. I think it's 3 kilohertz. Let's open the bandwidth up a little bit. Let's go to 4. And yeah, that does make a difference. Improves the fidelity. Um, I don't know if you can make out the the battery readout just below the frequency. I'll see if I can zoom in slightly without losing focus. Saying 0 0.14 volts. So there's obviously an issue there because if the battery was 0 0.14 volts, we wouldn't be having any reception. Radio wouldn't switch on. We've got a signal to no noise ratio of 14 dB, according to this. So it's dropped to 11 there. We've got RSSI. I'll just um, move you over slightly. 19 dB. We've got an S meter here. Um, now this indicator here, I don't know what the relevance is. It runs from 0 to 100. I'm wondering, could it be battery capacity remaining? That would make sense. It's only had a limited charge. So maybe that, that would be useful if it was. Um, in the red here we have 0 0.1 to 30, so that must be an indicator of what band the radio says we're in. Let's just check that. We'll go to band. And yeah, now we're on 22 meters. So that's a very quick look at the radio. I'll do some uh, performance tests. We'll compare it to the ATS-20, which I think is it's basically got the same receive circuitry in, but a very different user interface. We'll compare it uh, later on to... Uh, some of the more established professional receivers in the shack and at some stage we'll take a look inside because I'd be interested to see what Arduino board we have in here and compare it to the inside of the ATS-20. I'm pretty certain it's going to have the same RF circuitry. I have seen uh, another video, I'll see if I can link to it, with the front of one of these removed and um, when you take the front panel off it looks like there's an awful lot of space behind because it's a bigger case but it still has the the uh, the ATS-20 circuitry in. 
Anyway, I hope that was interesting for uh, the second part of this little uh, look at the ATS-25. Stick around, we'll have a lot more uh, playing around with this. i maybe try and get some basic instructions for it written, if any of you have one of these. It does look fairly straightforward, but given the change of the user interface, it might have been nice to just have a sheet of instructions. And at some stage we look at the, um, the firmware and whether it's possible to flash the Arduino and improve it. Obviously, uh, looking at the splash screen, Ricardo PU2CLR, who did such good work with the ATS-20, looks like um, some of the firmware he's written is within this, so it may be that there's some updates available. Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you again soon.